Thank you and welcome to Pitbull Audio. That was a tour of V Collection 5, our new software which features 17 classic instruments along with, as you pointed out, digital and analog have to haves. So, what I want to show you today is a couple of new things. One is, this is a debut of the new Keylab 49 Essential which is a new keyboard that Arturia is bringing out. It'll be available the first week of June. We're very excited about it. Uh, what makes it so different? Well, there's, there's a lot of controllers that are out there in the market. This particular controller, since we are well known as the award-winning DSP software in the business, is fully integrated into this keyboard, along with it having Mackie, control so that you can actually control your DAWs. Uh, you were saying how many DAWs support Mackie control? All of them. Pretty much all of them. So you can switch back and forth. This is a real big development. So what we're going to do right now is since you got a preview or say an overview of the software that we've got, I wanted to kind of bring up the cool browser that's in our software. Now the brow if you have 5,000 sounds that are at your fingertips, it gets kind of confusing. I know when I'm sitting there writing a song and I want a string sound or I want a bass sound or I want a brass sound, I can get pretty confused depending on where I'm at in the sound set. I don't know where the stuff is at unless I have a chart. So a browser is really a smart way of approaching this. And the way that Arturia has done it is, let's say, I'm going to bring up here all the different instruments and I'll give you a little bit of tour. You know, this is the ARP 2600, there's a B3, a Vox Continental, a Yamaha CS80, yeah, Jupiter 8, ARP String Ensemble or Selena, of course, Wurlitzer, classic mini Moog, Moog Modular, yes, this was developed with Robert Moog himself, believe it or not, the Farfisa, which many of us started on in rock and roll, thank you. 
This also has the prophet V and the prophet 5, the classic prophet 5. Um, and my favorite, I'm a little prejudiced, Oberheim guy that I am, this is the Matrix 12. And, believe, and we also have our Rhodes, uh, Oberheim SEM, and this particular product, which is pretty amazing, is Synclav was $150,000 to $250,000 digital uh, recording synthesizer, which set the industry, you know, it was, it's the classic. It brought us into the 21st century. Um, we were able to actually bring this and include this into the V Collection software, and it was uh, in conjunction with the original programmer, which uh, we're very, very proud of. So, bottom line is, is so, okay, so that's great. There's 17 instruments in there. You know, does anything sound good, and how do I get to it? Well, you click this little guy right here, and you can see that the types of sounds that you want are here. The characteristics of the sounds are here, whether they're aggressive or dark or soundtrack. And then you can actually pull up the actual instrument that you want to listen to. Okay. Now, if you're just going to work with a mouse or, you know, on the unit, then it's fine. But it sure makes it a lot easier if I can come over here and just do the selection. So let's say I wanted to um, do just... Uh, mini Moog sounds, okay. And notice I just scrolled over by just hitting that. I press the button, and now those are all the Mini Moog sounds, okay. And I want to listen to the original. I want to listen to bass sounds only. So now I'm just going to audition different bass sounds that are coming out of a Mini Moog, okay. I just set that up, right. So then I hit this guy, preset. And now I'm scrolling up and down all the different bass sounds that are in that mini mode. It's like, well, you know, let me listen to this bass sound. Uh, it's not really what I had in mind. How about an organ bass? No. Uh, that's kind of getting there. You know, give me, a, give me a fat sound, house bass. What's a house bass sound like? I can use that. Now, think about it. If you had 200 bass sounds to audition, I just went through and was able to pick out right from the front panel what I wanted to play with. Okay, so now I got a bass sound. Uh, maybe I want something a little bit more attack. That's okay, but let's try metal bass. I like that. Okay, so now we're going to go and pick out some string sounds, right? Because, um, or some pad sounds. So if I wanted, I'd get out a bass, okay, because we just did our bass. I wanted to pick out some pad sounds, okay, and now I want to just do pad sounds out of a Matrix 12 because we have an Oberheim Matrix 12 in there, okay? Bam, now I'm scrolling through these guys. And um, let me pick up a couple of interesting pads. I don't need that. I'll give me something a little bit darker. Oh, that's good. Uh, I want a little bit of a faster attack. Funny, I should say that because everything's auto automatically mapped on this. So if I hit this, you'll see that the knobs move on the dial right down there. So as you can kind of see, 
everything's auto-mapped right into the software and I can pick from the cool browser. This product comes with those sounds that I just played for you in the box, or you download it actually, for $199. This is going to be on sale first week of June. It's pretty amazing. Um, there's nothing else that's in the, in the market like this. There's nothing else that has this type of integration. Velocity keyboard, uh, easy to use with the browser, all the controls mapped to it. And we have another new guy on this table that I want to show you. This happens to be the new audio fuse. Ooh. Well, <laughs> the, the world doesn't need another audio interface, but it does need something that works better. Um, you know, I'm sure Edison uh, heard a lot about, well, why do you need anything that's better than a gas lamp except a better gas lamp? Well, he had to come up with a better idea. So this is an audio interface. What's different about it is that this audio interface is built for the creative flow that musicians have when they're recording music. Now, classic, uh, the interfaces that are on the market, for the most part, and they're fine, they have great specs, they're made by great companies, they just don't have the flexibility that people need while they're actually in the creative moment. I don't know about you, but if I'm in Pro Tools, and I'm worried about which track has got what solo on it and which reverb amount is going to what subgroup, all of a sudden the song slips away from me. And I don't want to do that. I actually want an interface. I want all my equipment to actually bring the creativity to me. When I'm into production, hey, that's fine. I'll sit there all night and I'll work out which tracks. And But, but on the creation of the music, I really want to have something that works with me. So this unit, the audio fuse, is a different approach. First of all, it's a small format. Okay, This is a, a crafted aluminum case and what makes it nice is that it has two uh, mic ends. This is a custom discrete construction. It's been invented to work with our Premier AKM A to D converters which nobody else is using. It's a, it's a pretty amazing process and we're able the original specs on this product were it had a negative 129 noise floor, which is, for those of you who don't know, it was really, 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 really quiet. And these are testing out now at one th negative 131, which means that they're just super quiet. It's got two discrete headphone outputs, which as you can see, you can do a separate Q-mix on each one of the headphone outputs. Okay, You also have phase switching, in other words, you phase switching on the mic ends and on the headphones you can do a, um, a mono so you can check the phase. For those of you who have been recording, if you get sounds that are out of phase, they cancel. And if you hear sounds move in the mix or all of a sudden your bass drum or your bass guitar just leaves the mix, you might have a phasing problem. This allows you to find those before you actually do your final mix. So it's got two incredibly uh, high fidelity mic pre's on it and it has two discrete uh, headphone mixes on it but two features which are really unusual is number one talk back see the little light going I can just go hey you know I that vocal was really 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 good but you kind of took a breath at the tail end. why don't we redo that so whoever I'm recording with the headset just knows I don't have to scream or throw something at them. All they have to do is just go, oh, got it, okay, let's cut that track again. I mean, you'd think that more people would build those into an interface because that's where you're using it, but it's not the case. So this is really, really cool. Another really, really cool feature on it is, and you guys will get this, okay? How many people mix with one set of speakers and then do your, then put it out? Not very many successful people do that, right? Why do you have to mix on separate different types of speakers? Because they sound different. You want to have your good, sweet, honest monitors, and then you want to have monitors that actually sound good or is, uh, that everybody else is going to listen to your music on. That's why NS10s were invented, you know, just so that it was a standard. This has built-in speaker switching. So if I want to, I can go from speaker A output to speaker B output by just hitting a button. So I'm listening to this, 
and I'm going from my cheap speakers to my super good monitors just to make sure my mix is doing pretty good. That sounds like it's a pretty good idea. Great. So I got TalkBack and I got Speaker I.O. I've got two great mic ins. But wait, there's more. This has a full MIDI implementation built in. It has Word Clock and SB Diff for digital. It has full ADAT in and out for expandability. If you want to take a you know, eight channel mic uh, pre that's ADAT and stick it on here, bam, you got more. By the way, this unit, even though it doesn't look it, it's really a 14 by 14 interface. So after we've got ADAT, you've got two more inputs here. So you've got the two mic ins or combo inputs on the front and then you've got two inputs here. Then you've got your speaker A and B to go back and forth between your monitors. And this also has an RIAA phono preamp, super high quality. So if you're a DJ or a producer and you've been putting up with some products, let's say that aren't as high fidelity as you'd like to get your vinyl records into your computer, now you actually have a solution, and it's in this box. Plus, you have two inserts into this, one insert on each channel. One of the, my favorites is it's also a hub expander. How many times have you run out of USB plugs to plug into, and you got to mess around with the powered hub, and now your iLock doesn't work, and now you got to worry about you know, whether it's powered or not powered. Is it USB 2 or USB 3? No, just plug it right in here. It's that simple. So think about it. All these things that you really need that are practical are actually in this box. Um, the inserts have a very interesting function for all guitar players. Um, guitar players want to be able to record into their computer, and they're able to cut their track and use a plug-in, but it doesn't have that, that, that speaker sound just doesn't have that room sound. It doesn't have the, it doesn't, doesn't have the speaker flap, right? Well, this is built to be able to do reamping built into the box with the levels so the guitar player can plug into the box, record into the computer, all right? So he's, he's got Pro Tools with his tracks, takes those tracks, runs it back through the unit, comes out the insert, into his guitar pedal rig, into his guitar amp, into his speaker rig, back into the DAW. And now you've got the speaker sound because you mic'd those speakers. So it's a common thing that's done in studios, but most people don't bother with this setup because the products basically don't support it. Not unless you spend an extra 150, 60 bucks just for a reamping box, okay? You know, and so with the with talk back and with the speaker switching, that's another 300 bucks that's out there in the marketplace. Okay, USB hub, a quality one, you're going to spend 50, 60 bucks for it. RAAA mic pre, that pre is going to cost anywhere between cheap ones 50, good one is close to 100 bucks. You know, if you're even going to play with it. Altogether, you add everything up with the specifications that this has. The interfaces that are in this class are starting at about $750 to $1,000. Um, we've spec this out against everything that's in its marketplace, uh, comparable right on up to $1,500. So with all those features in this box, it's worth $1,200, and the map on it is $599. So it's all in one. You don't have to mess with other cables. It's a, hate to say it, but I really like it. It's cute, okay? It's got, <laughs> it's small. It doesn't take up a lot of space on, on the desk. It's got the right ins and outs on the back. It has incredible specifications that are world-class studio, and that's the audio fuse. I'm Ralph Goldheim. Thanks for listening. We're at Pitbull Audio, and stay tuned for more news.